Brian Greasy, kind enough to join us. The College Football Playoff Committee's newest rankings will be revealed Tuesday exclusively on ESPN at 7 Eastern. And uh, Brian uh, called the Alabama-Mississippi State game on Saturday with Steve Levy. Brian, uh, thanks for joining us. Uh, how, When you saw the injury, did you have any idea of the severity of that? Yeah, hey, Dan, good morning. Good to be with you. Um, you know, i got to be honest, uh, there was a lot going on in that one particular play. Um, you know, there was a lot going on on the sideline before the play. It looked like Mac Jones, the backup quarterback, was going to come in. And then it looked like Tua went up to Coach Saban and, and lobbied to come back into the game just to do that two-minute drill before half. And then uh, when he got chased down from behind, um, the first thing that we noticed was that his head hit the ground, and obviously he was bleeding from his nose. And you really didn't have a sense as to whether he was hurt until he tried to stand up and, and put no weight on that, on that right leg. Um, and then it was pretty obvious that there was something significantly wrong with him. We went back uh, and watched the replay, and then you could see where – his knee went into the ground. He had two defenders on his back, mm. uh, and there was a lot of force that went into that knee. And just like we saw with, with Bo Jackson, I mentioned it during the game, uh, when that when that that leg kind of gets jammed back into the hip, good things don't happen. And I got to be honest, Dan, it was it was probably one of the worst games I've ever called as an announcer, just because you hate to see the talented young players, young men like that. Uh, get hurt in that fashion and you know the severity of that injury and, and it could be threatening to his future career there's no question what do we know about that injury aside from Bo Jackson and it ended his career to progress that we've made recovery time with something like this well I don't know necessarily Dan I'm, I'm not the doctor um, but but what I do know is you know, obviously, Bo Jackson uh, was a different kind of athlete than, than Tua Tungavailoa and played a different position, much like a receiver. Uh, they are constantly cutting, moving, you know, going one direction to another. I think a quarterback certainly has a better opportunity of coming back from an injury like this because they're, they're in the pocket and Tua's moving around, but he's not making those hard cuts. So I hope, I know this, that the kid will, will have the surgery and he will rehab and, and he's a determined young man and uh, he'll do everything he needs to get back on the football field. And I think, I think he will. I don't think there's any question uh, that he'll get back um, and he will, and he'll give himself an opportunity to play at the next level at some point. We love to blame somebody. We're, we're a results based sports society, but if you're looking at this, um, can you put blame on anybody? And if so, who? I don't think so, Dan. I mean, you know, we um, we talked about it during the broadcast. Um, I, if it were me, if I were Nick Saban, uh, I don't think I would have started Tua Tungavailoa in that game. Uh, I don't think they needed Tua to win the game. Um, they had an opportunity to start Mac Jones. Um, and Tua came out, and he warmed up pregame. Uh, and if you needed him, for, for whatever reason, if it didn't go well in the first half with Mac Jones, you could always bring Tua in start of the second quarter, yeah. start of the second half if you needed him. Uh, but that's not the way that, that Nick Saban operates. It's not the way he decided to go. Um, and then, like he said, listen, once a guy's cleared to play, uh, I'm not coaching the game based on thinking a guy could get injured. Uh, and I understand that. But at the same time, you, gotta, uh, you have to assume the risk. Up, up 35-7 right before half. Uh, it seemed like he wanted to take him out. Uh, and he got talked into him going back out on the field, and unfortunately this happened. Where did you have him ranked among the quarterbacks, draft-eligible quarterbacks? Yeah, that's a good question. You know, I, I work with Todd McShay. He's on my crew as well, and we talk quite a bit about this on a, on a weekly basis. Uh, Todd had him ranked number one out of the quarterbacks. Uh, I, I did not. Uh, I think there's a couple of quarterbacks that uh, that I would take uh, would have taken ahead of Tua, um, but I, but I think obviously he's a first round talent. Um, he's, he's a special individual, uh, and, and he's going to have every opportunity to, uh, to be successful at the, at the next level. We're talking to Brian Greasy, ESPN, ABC college football analyst. He was on the call with Steve Levy, Alabama and Mississippi state. Also Molly McGrath, who did a wonderful job there on the sidelines. I mean, that that's, that's where, you know, you kind of 
go into reporter mode and you know she she gave us uh, up close and personal view of that injury and how painful it was for Tua so uh please send our best to her she was wonderful uh Saturday in dealing with a, a tragic injury there I'm also curious about this though Brian with the evolution of the quarterbacking position everybody's getting caught up with the evolution first it was Patrick Mahomes who changed the NFL now apparently Lamar Jackson's changing the NFL are they changing the NFL or are they changing the people, the establishment in opening their eyes to the possibility of who can play and what type of player can play that position? Well, I definitely think that they're, they're changing the decision makers' minds, right? That's all that really matters. The people that are going to select you in the draft, A, and B, coach you at the next level, and their job going to be on the line uh, based on how you play. Uh, so the fact that, that John Harbaugh uh, put all of his eggs uh, in Lamar Jackson's basket uh, in sending Joe Vlacco packing, um, I think that's, that's what you need as, as a player uh, and as a, what is becoming a transformational player in Lamar Jackson. Uh, you need to convince one person, and that person is the one that's job is on the line whether you play well or not. And, um, and so he has every, uh, every faith of, of John Harbaugh, I think he, he owes a little bit, yes, to the Michael Vicks of the world that uh, that came into the league um, and did it a different way. Um, and it's it's fun to watch right now. I think defenses are on their heels. Um, now, what, it'll remain to be seen um, if you can sustain this, right? If Kyler Murray can sustain this, um, can they stay healthy, right? That's, that's the biggest question that everybody brings up. Because uh, you don't have a backup. You don't have a transformational player backing these guys up that can do the same kinds of things. So, um, to me, it's, I think it's good for the league. Um, I think diversity in, in offensive attacks is, is great. I think putting defenses and defensive coordinators in tough positions um, is, is awesome. So, uh, it's a lot of fun to watch. It's a lot of fun to call. And I think you're going to get more and more of these th- kinds of players coming out of college because there's a lot of them that are going to get a chance. Uh, Brian is on the call tonight. It'll be on Westwood One with the Chiefs and Chargers from Mexico City. More likely to have an NFL team in Mexico or London first? <laughs> well, uh, evidently Dean Spanos is not going anywhere, so um, I, I would say neither. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay. But I tell you, just walk, just walking around down here, um, you know, there's 29 million people in the city of Mexico City, and uh, – you see a lot of Patrick Mahomes jerseys down here, so, so I think the, uh, the approach is working. Um, I have seen quite a few uh, Chargers jerseys as well. Oh, uh, but the people down here—the people down here love it. You know, I went to dinner last night, and um, you know they got the the Bears Rams game on. They're they're not watching soccer; they're watching NFL football. I talked I talked to my waiter. In Spanish, Dan. Yes, I did talk to him in Spanish uh, <laughs> about his favorite team. And uh, evidently he's a Steelers fan. So, you know, American football uh, is very popular down here. It's been fun to kind of spend a few days and, and uh, see the, the game how they see it. Uh, and I know they're excited about the game tonight. Will you speak Spanish tonight on the broadcast? Oh, I think I'm going to have to. Give me, uh, give me a little taste a here. Lines in. Give me a little taste. Uh, es un uh, equipo de Chiefs. Uh, <laughs> Tengo eh, un eh, lugar de eh, más uh, más fuerte en offensive football. Uh, I, I don't know what you said, but it sounds like it was Chiefs, Chargers, and maybe some good football or something like that. Uh, if I said you could have Lamar Jackson or Patrick Mahomes moving forward, who does Brian Greasy have? Wow. Um, that. It, I don't think anybody could pass up Patrick Mahomes. Uh, I mean, as, as transcendent a player and, and talent and athlete as Lamar Jackson is, um, that's as good a, a, a thrower and quarterback as Patrick Mahomes is. And uh, the only reason I say this is because of that injury uh, question. Um, you're, you're much more likely to stay healthy if you're Patrick Mahomes thrown from the pocket than you are Lamar Jackson running, running downfield. And that's, that's – Maybe the only reason why I would I would say that. Brian, have fun tonight. Uh, when you see Steve Levy, give our best to Leaves, and uh, we'll be listening. Thank you. I will, Dan. Thank you. That's Brian Greasy.
ESPN, ABC College Football Analyst, and uh, on the call for Westwood One tonight, Chargers Chief, uh, Chargers Chiefs from Mexico City. For more Dan Patrick Show, tune in to Audience Channel 239 on DirecTV, stream for free on BR Live, or download the Dan Patrick Show app.